Welcome to today's extra epic episode of Theatre Camp Live, and we are welcoming the Queen herself, Olivier nominee Natalie May Paris. Oh, there she is. We're going to request her in. Supporting Richford LGBT Plus today down there. Uh, that is a helpline for LGBT folks in the UK. Um, and hello hi. hi beauty oh it's so good to see your face oh my gosh you wait say. let me keep your hair turned it's feeling because why not <laughs> um so we're supporting switchboard lgbt plus um which is especially important nowadays because you know there are a lot of people stuck in dark situations and doors so we want to make sure people have resources and people to talk to we're also supporting covenant house in the uk in the u.s hello aiming to end youth homelessness so you can donate down there or at club 11.london slash donate Hello, my darling. Hello. Hi. Oh my! I'm so great, especially now for seeing you. Oh, where oh. are you spending? Where are you spending your lockdown? Where are you, darling? I'm with the family. Um, we're in um, a little place called um, Epping in Essex, just outside of London. So, lots of fields, and I feel very lucky. Very lucky yeah. to live where I live. So, yeah. Oh. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I'm, I escaped to my parents. I'm out in the woods too, which is great. Oh. We're really in this room, just all of the Britney Spears, just this oh, rainbow fan. It. It's really, I, I grew up being exactly who I was, you know. Love it. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you're good. Um, well, let me, I, I'm going to dig back into your history a little bit, if that's okay. Let's have a little. Okay. Yeah, why not? So. Grew up as a West End you? baby, but first of all, you started stage Finch school at age five. Which, first of all, what were, what classes were you taking at five? Was that just dance, or what were you up to? Five? <laughs> I don't. Do you know what? I, I can't even really remember those days. But no, it was an amazing local, just like a local dance school. Oh, that, got it. Like, you know, like when when you, your parents are like, "Oh, I'll, I'll just take my child to like ballet classes or whatever," and it was it was just a local dance school, and um, yeah, I loved it. It was so good, and it really, yeah, I did did all sorts. But I mean, um, yeah, it was just a really lovely little community of people and a really fun time. So yeah. <laughs> oh, I love, and obviously they served you well. How old were you when you, was your West End debut in Les Mis? Was that the first one? It was, yeah. How old I were think, you? I think I was seven or eight. How mad is that? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> seven oh, or eight. I yeah. love it. I mean, so first of all, wait, I have to shout out the submission. Oh, thank you, oh, Glenn. Jordan. Thank you, Glenn, you sweetie thing. Um. What do you remember about that experience? What do you remember about making your West End debut? I mean, that's so young. Did you know it was such a, an incredible opportunity? Do you know what? I think, I, because from such a young age, I just, I just always wanted to perform and, and be on the stage. So I think when I was that young, I just remember thinking, this is so cool. I'm, I'm doing, I, like most of my friends were at school and they were doing their normal academic classes and I'd then go off in the evening and, and go into London and, and get to perform on the stage so I think for me I was just like this is amazing I remember I've got a funny story actually when I um, <laughs> one of my really good friends um Sarah she she came to watch me and when um when I did Ep Young Eponine at first um she did hardly anything all she did was kind of skip on the stage give it one of these yeah. and then wait for a cue to push Cosette and then run back off. And I remember sitting, waiting for my cue and my friend Sarah, I can't believe it, the Palace Theatre, she stood up in the stalls and went, Natalie, Natalie, like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I, seven year old me, I was just staring at her like, oh my God, I can't believe we're doing that. And I completely missed my, I missed my cue and, Miss Tanadio was pushing me off stage and I was like, oh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel, I feel like it was, because I was so young, it was amazing, but it didn't really hit me. The, the second time I did Les Mis, actually, when I was a few years older, that's when I, it really hit me that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the West End. <laughs> oh my God, I love. Oh, and shout out to my friend Rue. Thank you, love. Um, 
goodness gracious. Okay, so you went back and forth. When you went back the second time, were you just because that proper? Is that what happened? Or I mean, not because that proper. Yeah. I mean, young because that proper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, um, I was young because that the next time I did it. Um, and I, to this day, I have never been more nervous than to, to sing Cast on a Cloud for that first performance. I just, I, honestly, I, and I loved, I loved it so much. Like I was so grateful to be doing that. Um, but I remember I called my mum before the opening night and I was on like, um, I mean, we just about had mobile phones then. It must've been, I don't know. And, um, and, I, <laughs> and I was like, hi. Um, and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm all right. And she said, she's never heard me sound so like, not me in my life, the whole, you know, in, in all the years that she, she's known me and she was really panicking. She was obviously on her way to see me. And I remember when the, before the revolve, I was standing there with a broom and I looked off stage and I thought, I can't do this. I can't, I can't do this. My heart was going so fast. Um, yeah, and, but then as soon as the song started, I was, I was fine. <laughs> exactly, you're like, I know what this is. I know, but sometimes that's the most, the most delicious thing, right? It's that moment before where it feels impossible and then you do it anyway and you're like, oh. Okay, oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay. This is why I do it. <laughs> oh, I love. Wait, so do you think Les Mis, did hearing Eponine and Fontaine every day, did that inspire you to become the Beltress that you are? Did you just want to be out there doing <laughs> I Dream to Dream and such? You know, were you... Oh, I, yeah, I, I used to sing on my own all the time. Um, so, yeah, I, like eight-year-old me is, would love to, to, to be able to do it as an adult because that was the song and that was the part that I... I really wanted, to, really wanted to do. I just, I just loved it. Yeah. I've never even heard you sing it. Do you sing that in your concerts ever or no? No, do you know what? No, do you know what? I feel like, I feel like I'd probably actually be more of a Fontaine now that I'm older. But um, I don't know. I feel like On My Own has got a bit of a stigma about it. Like you would never really take it to an audition. You would never it's kind of a bit untouchable that I just never really thought about singing at a, at a concert. <laughs> I'm going to make you someday. It's going to be great. <laughs> or we'll just do, we'll match them both up. It'll be fabulous. Yeah. Um, so Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Oh, I have my wand here. There we go. I oh, just I forgot to say, so we're here. Um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. How long after Les Mis was Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Was that between so, Les Mis's? Yes, that was, <laughs> oh my gosh, I think so. Um, do you know, yeah, I've got, I've got a memory book. I should have bought it out and remembered the timeline. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Les Mis Chitty. And I did like two, when you're a child, it's only like six months um, yeah. contract. So I, I did it twice. So I did like a year in total, I think. And then I think, yeah, then Les Mis happened again after Chitty. Yeah. I think so Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, it was a big flop in America, actually. How did it do over was there? It? Was it was it successful? Did people yeah. like it? Yeah. Well, I, it was like one of the shows. Like, especially as a child, there were like a few shows that kind of were the shows as a child that you'd want to be in or, you know. And Chitty was a massive one. I remember I, I had to do so many auditions before I got it. I I remember. And, and there were so many rounds. Like, they... They didn't hold back as a child. They they went for it. Like, <laughs> Ew, rude, rude. Yeah, I know. I know. Your poor parents too. I know. Bless them. Bless them. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we get Chitty is huge palladium. Says our Club Eleven folks. How funny! Yeah, um, it was great. Oh, I love it. And then you did Sunday in the Park, which I, you know, iconic and it's a beautiful recording of that. How old are you during Sunday in the Park? Sweet baby child. Ooh, um, <laughs> Why am I always asking the age? I'm so rude. You're like, Ben. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> How are um, you? <laughs> I've got to try and work it out, actually. Um, so I would have just got into, I think I was maybe 30. Oh, got it. Oh, no, my mum. My mum's just put 10 or 11. My mum's watching. <laughs> <laughs> 10 or 11. I love I it. I mean, wrong. 10 or 11, that's young to be in a Sondheim musical. I know, obviously, that's the track. But were you, did you think it was beautiful? Or were you like, this is a bit heady, isn't it? I don't know. What did you think? Um, I, out of all the shows that I did, like, they were all amazing. But for me, that was, that was the most special one to be a part of. In, in all aspects like yeah the music was it was 
yeah, even being, I don't ever remember thinking this is really boring. I just remember thinking this is amazing. And because normally there's like three teams, when I first did it, there was only two girls. So I was doing more shows than I would have in, in any other show and because we were the only child in the cast we got to mingle with with everyone so like they became like they, they took me under their wing like I became part of their little family which which I didn't really get in the other shows you were kind of separated as a child and they were the adults so um it was un, un, unbelievable to be a part of it was just and like working with like Daniel Evans and it was Jenna Russell. Like, it was just, yeah. yeah I, I look back and I think it, it really was, like, the most special thing as a child that I could have been a part of. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love, I love. And then, you know, like, also you did, I, I don't know why I'm so stuck in these child credits, but you did Billy Elliot, too. I know. Which, I mean, you dancing up a storm. What was that? What, and that's, like, being with so many children. Was that so fun? Or what was yeah. that like? We had, yeah, we had so much fun. Um, it was hard. Do you know what? I kind of, um, I, I didn't want to be in it. I, I wasn't bothered. When I got an audition for it, I was like, nah, like, I'm, I'm not that bothered about Billy Elliot. I hadn't seen it. And I just knew that it, you had to do loads of tap. And I was like, nah, not, not for me, not for me. <laughs> but um, I, I just kind of thought, yeah, why not? I'll, I'll go for it. And um, yeah, and and as the audition process was going on I loved it and I it made me realize like I I was I loved tap I loved tapping <laughs> but yeah it was it was so much fun there were there were loads of us obviously and um it was yeah it was really good with lots of dancing which I I wasn't really used to I guess yeah there's so many fun numbers did you have a favorite number to do in the play did you have a favorite moment I think um shine which is like the ballet girl number i remember there was like the quickest quick change ever in it where we had to run off and put these i don't know how, do you know what i actually look back and think i don't know how i did all of that being so young yeah, <laughs> yeah that was um that was really fun oh i love it so shout out to dominic gray 98 thank you for your donation your love oh. um which so at 16, you won a dance and drama award. You so fancy. That's <laughs> and so but then I'm so so first of all, I have to I have to talk about the dance thing a little bit. Because yeah. th the first time after we became friends, I saw you post a video of you dancing and you were incredible. I was like, <laughs> how do they make a joke in the play about your character not being able to dance? I was like, this is the shadiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so know. first of all, you're a, a dancing queen, an icon, oh. who knew? So, <laughs> congrats. But on top of that, which I want to talk about dance in a second, but you trained at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. I'm sorry, you're a Shakespeare actress? Who are you? <laughs> who, who would have thought it? <laughs> you're like, what kind of crazy triple threat are you? Oh my God, so, I mean, so you did like a Midsummer's Night Dream and a lot of plays that I don't know the names of because I don't watch plays, but oh my God. You know so what? I, was that so hard was that training so hard or did you did you take to it naturally I mean that must have been rigorous yeah I mean somebody um Michael Xavier um who he was the one that actually said to me have you ever thought about auditioning for like a acting drama school and I was like nah no like, <laughs> not, not little old me like I was like <laughs> funny and uh and he was like I, I think you should and I was like okay <laughs> and he kind of helped me with some pieces and I just literally applied kind of on a whim only for RADA um yeah and somehow I I, I got in <laughs> um on the foundation course but I was really nervous because I don't know I kind of think I personally had in my head like someone like Rada or, or Lambda is another one and all these like classically trained um trained well, you, schools I kind of never I thought I, I I would never fit into somewhere like that I was you know little old me kind of didn't really know a lot I was scared of Shakespeare I really was like I, I found it really difficult until I knew each piece so I was yeah. really nervous going um, but it was one of the best years of my life. It was unbelievable. I, it was it was hard. It was really intense. 
Um, and because we kind of crammed so much into one year being a foundation course, they, they kind of didn't hold back even though it was only a one year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, and, and actually, surprisingly, they, that was, especially my course leader, she was the one that kind of really made me realise that it doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter how you talk, what you sound like, it's, it's the work that you produce and, and how you are as you know your hard work and and what you put into it and she made me realize that and I thought that's so funny that somewhere that I was so afraid of that I didn't think I'd fit in encouraged me to just embrace me I guess um yeah it was it was yeah. <laughs> oh I love that and all of that time with Shakespeare P and all of his writing himself <laughs> do you have a favorite scary. Do you have a favorite Shakespeare play? You know, I know you did Midsummer's. Is that your favorite or do you have a different one? Um, or oh, do you know what? I, I'm still, I'm still not a hundred percent fully Shakespeare. Um, I, I, <laughs> but we did actually a really cool, um, everything was done like internally, but, um, we did a really amazing piece, like shortened piece of, uh, Macbeth. Oh. And I, for, and the teacher that we had was uh, amazing. It made sense, like everything. And he spoke through it. And the way that we did it, I was like, this makes sense. And it was really powerful. So that was really, like, once I knew it and, like, we did, like, a really cool version of it, I was like, this is great. But then anything else, I'd be like, what does it mean? <laughs> Oh my god, I love, I love. So thank you, Death Metal Weave and Char Senior for your donations, you rock. Um, wow. I love it, see, but that makes so much sense because that you are so grounded in the acting training because the first thing when I went to see the show that Jeremy and I talked about, is like, God, she's so truthful. Even the center of like some moments that, you know, six can be, it gets so big sometimes, but that you're at the core, you were always so grounded and so truthful. And we immediately zoned into that. So it all comes through, it all comes full circle. We love. All right, Jane Seymour, it's time to talk about it. It's time to talk about six, what they've all been Let's waiting do. for. Uh, okay, so your first uh, experience with it was you did the 2017 the Arts Theatre Off West End situation. Um, yeah. So tell me, I think I was reading a little, you had a kind of untraditional audition for it. It was a little different than a normal audition. Will you tell me about that? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, they, they obviously like it was such a new show. So even in like the, the brief kind of thing that my agent gave me, it, they didn't really give anything away. So I kind of thought, I don't really know what this is, but they said to bring a pop song. So I thought, I can do that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, they, you know, normally like, normally you go in and, and they don't, the panel don't really give anything. I don't know what it's like in America, but. No, same. Yeah, they don't really give anything away. You, you come out and you, you doubt yourself or you think, oh, I don't know how that went. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, they were so, so friendly. Um, and obviously Toby and Lucy are, are my age. So they were really young when the panel was, along with a couple of other, the MD at the time and the director at the time. Um, and after I sung, <laughs> I remember Toby going, <laughs> like that. And I was like, oh, I was like really thrown because normally you could, they kind of go, thank you, goodbye. And, and he was, he was applauding me and I thought, this is so weird. I don't really know how to respond to this. What was the song? What'd you sing for them? I sung, um, If I Ain't Got You by Alicia Keys. <laughs> yes, a favourite, a favourite. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then they kind of just said, thank you. They were really, really friendly. And I, I kind of left and thought, oh my God, I, I feel, even if I don't get this, I feel really good. Like I, I felt great. And then obviously I, I did get a recall. And again, it was just kind of like a fun day with everyone involved. We had to sing in front of each other, which was a bit scary, but everyone was kind of whooping and joining an, an enjoyable day. It didn't feel like an audition. Um, yeah, and then and then that was kind of. I it, love that. It, I love young people being in charge and deciding to make their own vibe. You know what I mean? I think that's yeah. beautiful. Shout out to Emily Kinghorn and uh, Marielle five two three five. Thank you for your donations, loves. Um, 
So, talk, so for that, for your recall, I love, I love, I love the British term, for your recall, um, <laughs> did you, did they teach you some of Heart of Stone or what did you have to say? So for the initial recall, they just said, bring another pop song. Um, so that was all I had to prepare. They, the, the choreographer at the time just taught us a routine. It wasn't even to any of the, the songs from the show. Um, and then we, they kind of gave us the opening scene <laughs> by our own interpretation of the scene. They kind of just allocated, can you read for Howard, you read for this, that and the other. And, and um, we just kind of had, they just kind of said go. So all of that, the bands, everyone was given it so extra. Nobody knew. Um, yeah. It was hilarious. And then that evening, my agent called me and said, can you go back in tomorrow after their other round of recalls? And I was like, okay. And they didn't tell me to prepare anything um and I was just waiting for the they had their like second full day of recalls so everyone had left and there was only a couple of people left behind from that day <clears throat> and um they called me in and, and another girl and they just said oh could you just have a look at this piece of music we're just going to teach you the chorus um, and then sing it one by one and it was Heart of Stone but I'd never heard it prior to that it was just kind of note bash yeah. um, then they sent us back out and a few other girls went in and then they said can you look at this scene um just have a look at, a look at it we'll call you back in in a minute so <laughs> it was the the kind of monologue part before I go into Heart of Stone so mm -hmm. I, I was going just kind of reading through it getting to know it and then we all went in and they'd given different scenes well not scenes different kind of monologues to a few of the other girls. And I remember Amy did her, the Howard monologue, and it was so funny. And then another girl, I think it was um, Christina, who originally played Berlin, she then did um, something, it, I can't remember what it was now, it's, it's not in the show anymore, I don't think, but it was, again, really funny. And then I started to doubt myself and thought, have I just completely <laughs> misinterpreted my monologue? <laughs> and it's meant to be really funny. <laughs> So I was like, oh God. So I just carried on and stuck to my guts and, and, it, and gave it all emotion and all of that. And then yeah. I came out and I called my mum and I was like, mum, I think I've ruined it. Like everyone was really funny and I wasn't. And what have I done? Um, and just overthinking everything. And then they, they said, no, you've got the job. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, so what do you remember about um, your first rehearsal for Heart of Stone, like doing the whole song proper? Um, was it, was Toby there as well as the music director? Was it really specific? Was it kind of loose? What was that day like? Um, well, I think we were kind of learning the material together and then we kind of had allocated time slots that we were just one-on-one -on -one with the MD. Um, and we kind of note bashed it through and actually, he said to me, you know, and, and this is so unique, I guess. He kind of said, if you want to change the key, we can change the key. Um, and I was like, yes, because it was so high. To begin I with. bet it was in a boy <laughs> key probably or up there, you know. Yeah, I was course. like, should I really a little bit? Um, and um, so that was great. And then he kind of told me there were certain parts that I could do my own thing, but everything else had to kind of stick to what it was and I was like yeah. oh great so like the word truthfully that was kind of written just tr as one line I guess and he said you can do whatever thing you want on that so I got to come up with all the kind of ad libby parts the bit at the end like I yeah I got to add all of that in myself yeah so it was just yeah that was written and everything after that they were like it's up to you so that was really great because I guess you, you don't always get that. You kind of, yes. normally, you slot into a show and you kind of do what is, what has been going for a while, I guess. So to have a lot of, not say, but a lot of freedom to kind of do what I wanted and create the song and make it original to me was, was really cool. So um, yeah, but I just loved it. I heard it straight away and thought this is, could have been written for me. Like it was a yeah. perfect <laughs> Wait, I love, wait, I have to shout out, um, oh gosh, 
Ciola Daily. Sorry if I say that wrong. Uh, thank you for your donation. And Emily, I don't know if I said you yet. <laughs> Slash, you have to think about this. People are going a little wild there, and they're saying if you sing a, some of I Don't Need Your Love, they will do a big donation. You think about that. I'm not going to make you do it, but I think that's really clever down there. You all are you're really funny in the comments. I see you. <laughs> Wilding out. Um, gosh, okay, so... In rehearsing the show, you know, what I, one of the things that I love about it so much is the vocal detailing is so specific. There's so many very specific crescendos, like scoops, swartzandos, straight tone vibrato, so many effects. Now, how many of those did they give to you guys? And how many um, was it like you guys coming up with it in the room? You know, how involved were you all creatively? What was that process like? Um, well, we kind of, it was a kind of a bit of both, I guess. That Toby definitely knew exactly what he wanted um, in regard to, especially the, the ensemble parts, the, the cutoffs and, and those kind of uh, yeah. things like that, the, the crescendos and all of that sort of thing. He knew that we had to, we had to learn it how he wanted. Um, but we, but we, we kind of really got to add our own and, and put our own personalities and put our own little effects into it as well uh, because we we kind of started it and it was it was very much a collective kind of thing I guess we we kind of we felt like we were all working on it together even though Lucy and Toby I guess they, they didn't actually um Lucy directed it when it became the show as we know it now. Right. When we did it, we had a different director. So even Toby and Lucy weren't in the room as much and didn't have as much of a say to, to begin with, which is crazy when you think about it. But um, it just kind of all felt, because it was kind of a workshop too, we kind of were just all, all guns blazing, kind of just yeah. trying to get the show together, I guess. Um, and then when we went on tour and we had a slight change of who was um, the cast. Then it kind of became a bit more structured, I guess. But um, but we definitely had a lot of freedom to explore and do lots of things with the script as well as the as well as the um, the solo songs, I guess, and the solo the little individual lines yeah. and stuff. And I will say, and now it's so set. I feel like, you know, it's like when you see it on Broadway, it's like everything that you guys like completely nailed down on the cast record is like very much replicated. You know what I mean? It's like the thing now. So it's so fun to hear about it being loose initially until you guys found like the secret formula. Yeah. Um, and for your experience, you know, you hopped in, I'm sure, or for the Classroom Heroes Awards, you went on with the tour girls a little bit and you plugged hey. into that. Now, did you find, like, do they do it just how you knew it? Or was it, did you have to adjust? Or are they, like, they really learned it just the way you know it? What was that like? Um, they, no, they, they kind of, they, they did it. They obviously, every queen, like, every alternate or every queen has, and they encourage to have their own little flavor, which I yeah. think is amazing, which, which, makes it so that not everyone's exactly the same but at the same time they I, I wasn't kind of like what was that or ah I, I haven't heard that before they, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they kind of did it exactly as I know it you know and I yeah it was I, I felt more for them because that was their first performance um and it was it was a kind of like the sound we couldn't hear and there was so much oh. going on that I I felt for them because that was their first kind of thing, but they were amazing. They they did it so well. I think maybe if I would have heard them singing the, their individual songs, it would have been different. But I think yeah. they did X wives. It was uh, it was kind of like yeah, everything that I kind of yeah. I feel like the direction is so specific now, which I love. I love specificity. Um, <laughs> But I will say, you know, so then your journey continued and you did the tour and then you guys came into what was supposed to be your limited run um, at uh, your current West End Theater and it's ongoing, which is amazing. So what I want to know is, you know, it's it's literally packed every night. Like Jeremy and I, when we came, 
thank goodness Courtney Bowman and everyone that you guys hooked us up but we sat at the soundboard because it's not like there was a ticket that was held that could be purchased uh, so I mean when did you realize it was like that and was going to be like that like when did you realize it had exploded um I think the moment that we all kind of realized this could be a little bit groundbreaking was when we were on tour when we were uh, when we did the Edinburgh Fringe Festival um we were like the one of the biggest venues within the, the fringe um and we had like the the um oh i can't think of the word the the peak time of of show yeah <laughs> that makes sense um and obviously at the fringe people kind of just go and see stuff and it and it then it becomes known what the good things to see are and what the phenomenons are and all of that so yeah after a couple of days it kind of went from having a few people in the audience to no one could get a ticket for the whole of the Fringe Festival, pretty much. And I remember there was like one moment where it was sold out. And obviously we were really close to the audience. We didn't even have a stage. It was on the, on the flat floor. And then it was like teared up. Oh, so got it. So close to the audience. And I remember one night um, doing the end, um, we're six, boom, like that. And the the way that the audience reacted, like it, it made me want to cry. It was so overwhelming. It like hit me in my chest and in my gut. And I was like, oh my God, like this show is amazing. And I'm so, I can't believe I'm a part of it. You know, I think that was, that was the moment that we were all kind of like, okay. And then lots of people were trying to get tickets. And, and as the tour sort of went on, we did a, a small stint in the West End as part of the tour. And um, yeah, it was just overwhelming. It was overwhelming. I feel like that's the only word that I can use to describe. So um, I think that was the, the, the kind of, but, but even then we, we didn't even think that it would get to what it is now. Yes. It's like phenomenon of a show, you know? Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> and I also say big shout out to Jean McKenzie for your huge donation. Thank you, thank you so much. That is so kind. You're inspiring. Thank you for everybody for your generosity. And thank you for being so generous with your time, Natalie. You are oh, slaying it. And of course, you know, then uh, in conjunction with that, the big honor was getting asked to do the record, which, you know, was sort of like a separate, you know, who's who of the history of six. Um, what do you remember about that experience? What was it like recording the record? Um, the album? Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was so like, it was actually quite chill. <laughs> um, because it was it, it was in a very small studio. Um, it and we'd only done like, six or seven performances prior to that. And um, it was it was just kind of like, this is cool, we're gonna do this recording, and it's gonna be really fun. And what an amazing thing to be a part of. But um, yeah, at, at the time it, it was just kind of like, that. that's really cool. And then obviously, then when it got released and the, the way that everyone reacted to it, then we were kind of like, oh, like, oh, wow. oh. oh, that was a <laughs> big step. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love... Yeah, but we, we just had like, a, it, it didn't even take that long. It was kind of like we, we did our bits and it was really hot and we were outside having a laugh together and um yeah and to to, to have it now to have so many streams is my mind's like ah! <laughs> yeah it's crazy oh i love i love i love i love um so then you know within the show aside from heart of stone because we know we love and i bet on most days except when you're tired you look forward to doing it do you have a favorite number to do in the play in the music um, I actually, my favourite song in the show is actually I Don't Need Your Love. <laughs> I, I just, as you know, I, I, I just love it. I love the way, I mean, all the songs are amazing and they've been written so well. But I just, when I first heard it, I was like, oh my God, I love this song. And I think as well, like, especially more the reprise of it, where we all sing it together mm -hmm. and, and, that's the kind of um the point of the sh that, that part is like the point of the show where it all gets kind of explained and 
and yeah. we're, and and us being together, it just feels so empowering, us doing that part together with our amazing female band, all of us girls on the stage, like as one. Um, so not, not just because I think the song is such a great song, but because that's kind of like such an amazing moment in the show. And um, it feels so good when we kind of like, it's like we've absolutely slayed and we're all like, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, it's so... The emotional arc of it was totally unexpected for me. I think I just thought it was going to be fun. I didn't realize, like, like the ukulele or whatever started at the beginning of six after that number. And I was like, why am I so emotional? I feel for these women. <laughs> I love them all. <laughs> I think, though, that's what's so genius about their writing is that, like, it's so relatable. It's not, they, they've done it in such an amazing way that they don't feel like these these queens that no one knew or, re or could relate to. They've done it in such a genius way that it makes everyone at some point feel something, you know? I think that's why they're, they're genius writers. <laughs> oh my God, I love it, I love it. Slash, Natalie, these, these comments are cracking me up. Will you just give yeah. me like two seconds of, you know, I love you, boy. Will you give a little <laughs> this love part? I think they'll freak out or yeah. should we not? Oh my gosh, okay. Oh my god, I feel this is so weird. I feel like I'm betraying Jane. <laughs> no, no, no. You're you're keeping the sixth love alive while we're in quarantine, you know, in lockdown. Okay. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. You know I love you, boy, in every single way. Though I love you, boy, I'll miss you every day. Oh, I love you, boy. I wish that I could stay with you and keep the life I made with you. <laughs> yes! yes! Yes, you're welcome down there. Oh, you are a charitable That's as close soul. as I'm going to get to playing pa. <laughs> that is so good. I'm going to play piano to that later. Watch out. Oh, my gosh. Okay. The, are you okay to keep chatting a little bit? The donations yes. have been so good. So, um, I want to talk to you about the morning you guys were nominated for an Olivier. When you were nominated, Natalie Paris, Olivier nominee. What was that day like? What you know, the Tonys are in the morning. When do they? When are the Olivier nominations? Like when do they tell you? I think it was sort of midday one day. I can't remember the date or the day, but I remember it was in the day. <laughs> but um, it was so mad because we knew. Obviously, we knew that um, the people from the Olivier's were coming to watch the show in the lead up. So we kind of had a little inkling that maybe like six, the musical as a musical would be nominated or, or one of the categories, you know, we kind of thought, yeah, we think we've kind of got that. But when I read that us personally, we'd been nominated, I just, I, I, could, I couldn't believe it. Like I can't, put into words I just cried I was just like I can't believe especially as well like because of the whole journey that we've been on as well it just made it even more amazing and, and kind of yeah it was it was an, an incredible moment like I, I I'm st I still can't believe yeah. it happened <laughs> I love it it's such an epic fairy tale and so deserved so thank you, Tara, for your donation. Um, who did you call first when you found out? Did you call your mom or who did you call? I called my mom, of course. Do you know what? She wasn't at home, actually. Maybe she was at work. And I just called her and I was like, oh, my God. And I'm like, how dare she? <laughs> <laughs> Working. <laughs> um, yeah, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I think I, I can't remember how I said it. It was just all a bit of a blur. But I called her and she screamed and we were both like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love, oh, it's such a beautiful, you're such a legend for all of your involvement in it, but your spirit is so beautiful. So as I know, as lucky as I'm sure you feel to have done the whole thing, they're so lucky to have had you at the heart of the piece this whole time. It's so beautiful. Um, have you ever seen another production of it or have you not yet? Have you gotten to watch the show ever? No, no. I, I watched, we, we got to do a show watch so oh, so I you was, swung out, or that's how we say it in yeah. America, you know, we swung out. Yeah, I was, I was swung out. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, we, in Edinburgh, because at, when we did the tour, we only had one girl, Gra um, Grace Moat, who was our kind of um, cover for all six parts. And uh, so Edinburgh was her first chance that she had like an alley. 
dedicated date to go on as each of us. Um, so I watched it then, but obviously. it paused um so i got to watch it then but then after a Got while it. we then at the arts theater when we were like settled into the arts theater we got to do another show watch so it had been maybe a year since that edinburgh watch and um me and the, the girl that played par mayor and um, we got to do a show watch together so we sat with each other and I was like number one fan. <laughs> I I was like I couldn't the, the audience was just like electric and we would we were like we had to stop ourselves from shouting because we were like we've got a show tomorrow. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I was like, oh my god, I I I get it. Like I I really felt like I understood not that I didn't beforehand, but you kind of, when you keep, when you're in the show and you keep doing it, you kind of forget or you lose the, how the feeling of when you started the show. Um, and it was amazing. I couldn't wait to do it the next day. Oh. And I was so excited to, to, to do it because I, I just, it was amazing. I just think it's, it's I, yeah, I felt so lucky to be in the show. Oh, I love, I love it. So I have to shout out one more. Uh, Emily, thank you for your donation again. Um, oh, goodness. Well, I have to tell you, I mean, that's, I, well, I can't wait to, you know, Natalie and I last month were supposed to do Broadway Love Selena Gomez, which we will someday, you know, in America when the moment is right. But I can't wait to get to take you to see the show because they do, they are so beautifully respectful of what you guys have created. And I think you will be so moved to see, you know, because I got to see it in early previews and it, um, the way the audience goes on fire, it's just like it is in London, even though we don't know the history that well, but it lands yeah. and it lands beautifully. And it's such a beautiful tribute to everything you and the rest of the Queens have done in the development to create it and craft it and make it beautiful, make it specific. It is, it's such a tribute to you guys. So I can't wait to see it with you. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. We obviously see like things that we get tagged, we get, to see like the mega mix oh, yeah. and stuff. And it just is it's so fun to watch so many different people playing these amazing queens. So yeah, can't wait. <laughs> no, okay, I'm, I'm gonna start wrapping it up because you've been so good with your time and thank you everyone for the donations, but I'm gonna get to some quick ones. But um, yeah. tell me about Sorella, is that how you say it? Your acapella group? Yeah, Sorella, yeah. We, um, oh, love them. Um, we, we we are kind of i don't know how to explain this really yeah we're kind of like a, a four-part harmony group um we, we we don't get to gig as much now because obviously the show i was and, and we don't have any replacements but um yeah we we right. kind of got we we used to work for a company where i used to be a part of a motown tribute band which was so much fun um and we all worked for the same company and they decided they wanted to put another kind of like act out to go and gig. So they kind of put us together. Um, and it was like, we clicked straight away. Like it was like, we'd known each other forever. Um, and yeah, we were called something different then and it was very different. Um, and then we, we left that, that company and we kind of went out on our own and we changed our name, Sorella, which means sister in Italian, which um, oh. is really good. Yeah, and um, yeah, we we just I I I am such a sucker for a harmony anyway, and those girls are amazing, and I I truly truly love singing with them. Like, I just feel so great when we when we all sing together. And they're amazing as well. Um, we've been working on some stuff actually in isolation, which has been really nice. So um, yeah, they're um, oh. I can't wait to hear that. Though I can tell you, I know harmony is really hard in isolation. You know what I mean? Like lining up three vocalists. You have to be so specific with each other. We're doing yeah. it a lot at Princess Party. It's a lot. Um, yeah. Do you have, I have to shout out, we had a huge donation from Paige. I think that was related to your singing of the number. So, sorry, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, yeah. do, do you have a favorite number that you guys do together? Is there a favorite song that is like classic to your group? Oh, oh, um... 
Do you know what? There's quite a few. There's what we do um, a version of Hit the Road Jack. Brilliant. Which is, we, we kind of really, really love um, like the post wooden jukebox vibe. That's mm -hmm. kind of our sort of vibe. Um, so, yeah, we do a really cool um, version of, of Hit the Road Jack. And um, oh my gosh, so many are going around in my head now. Um, there's like, we, we did a version of Hello by Adele, and uh, we kind of like changed up one of the sections of it and it's just like four part harmony all of us are just kind of giving it belting and um it gives me all the tingles like just moments like that i guess where we feel like we're really one singing singing together <laughs> oh well, i can't wait i hope i get to see you do that live at some point i'm gonna have to coordinate oh. a trip we're gonna make it happen yes but that's so funny your story about that reminds me of the Spice Girls story about, you know, being put together as one thing and then discovering you're like, oh, this is our vibe. This is our thing. We're going to do it. So yeah. who was your favorite Spice Girl? <gasps> Baby Spice. Me too. Ah! Yes, Emma. <laughs> my girl. Oh my God. I have to tell you something really devastating. So we were supposed to be doing Broadway Princess Party last week. And there was a moment where maybe maybe she was going to come. It was maybe going to happen. And she, I had tickets. For, it was so devastating to me that like, I missed out on my chance. Not only did I not get to be in England, but like, Emma was maybe going to come. No. <laughs> Lockdown is terrible. She needs to make it happen again. She exactly. You know, it's, I just got to get more show. famous so that I can, you know, it'll all work out. Okay. <laughs> biggest vocal influences on you. Oh, that's tough. That's really tough. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, I really love listening to Christina Aguilera. Um, and do you know what, as well? My parents used to play um, a um, Natalie Cole album in the car. Do you know Natalie Cole? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, Natalie Cole, so that was another. I remember hearing that. But I feel like I was quite lucky that I was brought up with so many different like, genres of music and listening to like lots of like Diana Kroll was another person that my parents mm -hmm. used to play all the time. Um, but yeah, and then obviously all the classics, Beyonce and Whitney Houston and, and those kind of people. But um, yeah, I, I feel like it was quite a lot of different genres and influences that, that I love. You know? But you know, I hear that. That explains why you have such style and such taste, because uh, there's such uh, diversity there. Wait, one of the fans just reminded me that Emma came to see you in six, which let me tell you was crazy. Because Emma came to see you in six, on a day Two I days almost before came, Jeremy and I because came, because she came in on the six Instagram page next to the picture of you, Queens, and Emma <laughs> is the picture of you, Queens, and me and Jeremy. <laughs> that was like as famous as I've been. I was like, that almost. I've made it. I've made it. <laughs> oh my God. Did you guys wink at her or anything during? Um, there's like the one Spice Girls send up in the yes. line. Did any of you, did you look at her? Did she, okay. did she make a face or anything? Because Jerry came too, right? At some point, I die. Oh, no, I froze. Oh, there we go. Back. I just love. <laughs> oh, what a legend. I know. Okay. Okay, okay there we go. We're, we're okay. We're okay. Um, okay, quick fire, just a couple last ones. All right, favorite musical ever? <gasps> oh, I love, I love, I love. And nice, because like you can never really do it, so you can just appreciate it. <laughs> no, um, it. West End or Broadway? Oh, that's really hard. Okay, I feel like, oh, that's so tough. Um, I feel like obviously West End because that's where I live. However, it would be an absolute dream 
to be able to perform on Broadway. Like that to me is like, you've made it. <laughs> we're speaking it into the universe. We're going to try to make yes. it happen. And I love because, you know, American people feel the same way about the West End. That they're like, if, if someone asked me to come to London, that would be everything. Yeah. All right. What's your karaoke song? Do you do karaoke ever? Do you have a go to? Oh, do you know what? Do you know what is so weird? As much as I love singing and I, I karaoke just makes me terrified. <laughs> I can't think of anything worse than doing karaoke. <laughs> but there's when I'm like, I've, I've done karaoke a few times when I've had way too many gins. Of course. Um, and I love um, Ain't Nobody, Shaka Khan, or Somebody Else's Guy, Justin Brown. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Well, you know, in America, we have these places, they're like the private karaoke places where like yes. you can get a room with like four friends and just drink. And that's, that's the kind of karaoke I like. I don't want to sing karaoke for strangers, but I'll sing karaoke yeah. for you anytime. <laughs> yeah. um, now, we know you love to sing Colors of the Wind and you do so beautifully at it, but who's your favorite Disney princess? Oh, that's a really tough one. So someone asked me this question the other day and Obviously, I was kind of brought up with the, the old like Snow White, Cinderella and everyone. But I watched Tangled for the first time a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, she's amazing. She's yeah. so cool. Like, she is. So, yeah, I was like, love it. I'm going to go. Tangled's in the mix. All right, we need a little when will my life begin moment in your life. We need to make that happen. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. Mary Poppins or Nanny McPhee? That's such a British question. I love it. Mary Poppins. Same. Um, funniest mishap on stage. Sometimes that one's long, but what do you think? Did oh, you have any crazy one? There's so many. Um, oh, my gosh. Okay, so there was... Oh, I've got two. I've got two. This is really embarrassing. Oh, my gosh. So I've told one of these, one of these stories quite a few times. So in House of Holbein, before we go back to do the, like, the Tinder scene... Mm -hmm. We have our like paths that we all take so we don't bump into each other. So as we were going, I was going to take my kind of route, I lost my balance and I kind of just thought, I don't really know where I am. And just thought, I just need to st stabilize myself. So I grabbed hold of JJ, who plays Aragon, trying to like keep myself secure. And I just held on to like, a pathetic piece of string on her costume. So obviously it snapped. And I was like, no. <laughs> and I just kind of, because I was already trying to get to where I needed to go. I was, you know, when you, you're falling, but you're trying not to fall and you're kind of face planted to the floor and your legs are like this. That was literally me. And I thought, I'm just going to have to fall to the floor. And Millie said that it was so funny because it just so happened that as soon as I fell to the floor, it was the moment where we all go, oh, yeah, like that. And I, and I knee slid and my knees were burning, like burning. Oh. And I, I got up so quickly and the whole audience was laughing at me. Everyone on stage was also laughing at me. I was laughing at me. Nobody could, <laughs> could control themselves. All our shoulders are going like this. And, um, <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was so embarrassing, but so funny. All the emotions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wait, but was... what's the other one? <laughs> the other one, okay. I haven't actually told this one before. I forgot about it. And then I was then... So... I, like, very, very rarely forget my lines. And uh, and if I if I have my, like, because I've done the show so much, like, autopilot gets involved and, and I kind of carry on. But this one night, <laughs> I came on stage and it was after Catherine Howard's song. And um, she come, uh, I come on stage first and I stop her and pull her back. And um, and I looked at, um, I think it was, it was Zara, one of the alternates who was playing Catherine Howard. And I looked at her and thought, I have no idea what my line is. And I just looked at her and I was like, oh. Um, um, and I just kept saying, um. And she was looking at me like, are you okay? And I was like, um, yeah. Um, and I was looking around like this. And then Someone I, save I, me. I couldn't think of a word and like no word makes sense made sense in my head and i just said i can't believe i said this i was like you know henry had 
another mother. <laughs> and all the girls looked at me and thought, what, what are you talking about? And I then started laughing because I thought, I just wanted the ground to swallow me up. And I looked at Courtney and I said, I literally said to her, help me, help me, please help me. Save me. And save me. And I was, I just, I just, I, I went red. I just wanted to cry. I, 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 it, anxiety was just going through me. And she then just replied and said, calm down, Jane. <laughs> and carried on with the scene and I, I just thought <laughs> and, and for the, do you know what it's so crazy like the next couple of days I was overthinking everything I was like this is horrendous what if it happens again and, and the, I can't believe that I basically said Henry had another mother what does that even mean oh my gosh awful, <laughs> awful. oh my god that was jolly okay final question my love thank you for being yeah. so good with your time when the arts finally return and theaters reopen, what is the thing that you personally are looking forward to most? Oh, do you know what? I, I, I just can't wait to be reunited with everyone. Everyone in the building, the cast, the crew, the even the front of house staff, like it is, it, we really do have so much fun together. And it's just such an amazing, an amazing place to be. Um, with people that just love the same thing as you. So I think, um, yeah, just to kind of be able to reunite with everyone would be, would be amazing. I can't wait to give everyone a hug. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, I miss hugs, I know. I oh, well, I can't wait. You know, if you guys open up sooner, I'll come visit you. If not, we'll yeah. bring you over here when the concert is. Right now it's set for August, but I don't know how I feel about the month of August at this point, but we'll find out. We'll but see. I want to thank everyone who donated. Um, thank you so much for supporting vulnerable young people. And Natalie, thank you so much for all of your time, for your stories, for your heart. I'm so glad to see you. Yes. All my love to your mom. Stay Aww. safe. And um, <laughs> hopefully we'll get to make music sooner than later together. Yes.